Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and isn't it weird to play an Atari game on a Nintendo console? It's especially weird to play Sega games on a Nintendo console. You know what? You know you've won the console wars when you were competitors. Although I think Sega was more of a competitor than Atari. Atari, Nintendo kind of like blew Atari out of the water right when they first appeared on the scene. Um, so Atari obviously existed before Nintendo, the Atari 2600 and arcades and stuff. But Nintendo came out with the Nintendo Entertainment System, took over the market, and then Sega came. Anyway, long story short, you know you won the console wars when both of your major competitors are now on you uh, in the future. Although, interestingly enough, Nintendo then became the underdog to uh, Sony, um, and then somewhat Microsoft, although Microsoft's sort of been the third wheel for a long time. Um, I would probably argue that between Sony and Nintendo, those are the, the biggest uh, enclaves of gamers. Although, you know, Nintendo's had some flops. You know, they had wild success with the Wii U and then now the Switch, but then they had massive flops with, like... Uh, or not the Wii U. The, the Wii was a massive success. The Wii U was a flop. You guys get what I'm saying here. Anyway, what are we talking about here? We are playing Ikaguru. <laughs> Excuse me. That turned into a cough there. Ikaguru, Ikaguri. Um, this is one of the games in the Book of Thousand Video Games that's played before you die. And... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh, God. I'm still getting over this stinking cough, which will not go away. Um, if you're paying attention, this is one game actually that um, I remember reading about a long time ago. So you have a ship that can switch between two different modes, light and dark. And when you're light, light bullets won't hurt you. When you're dark, dark bullets won't hurt you. So um, hopefully we can actually make the switches in time and we can play this. But um, other than that, it is a vertical shoot 'em up scrolling game. Um, enemy ships do not fire back when destroyed. Enemy ships of the same polarity fire back. All enemy ships fire back. Why are they giving us a time limit to decide here? And who's this creepy zombie dude to the right there? Um, unlimited player stock. I'll just do normal game. Um, this game originated as an arcade game, and I think you see remnants of that there. And the fact that it was giving us a limited time to make some basic selections. I mean, I get that this is a port of an arcade game, but do you need to port that part of it? Is that part of it essential? You know, make people feel a sense of urgency when they're selecting what kind of game to play. Um, okay, so we want to absorb. I don't know if we're absorbing or we're just not being hurt very much. I should pay attention to that blue bar on the side. It'll probably reveal what is happening here. But, uh, oh, I think we are legitimately gaining power. Okay. Oh, and then we can fire the power. Okay. And then this switches sides. Oh, there we go. Gain the power. Okay, the enemies are finally shooting at us. Switch sides here. So I don't know if their bullets... Switch sides again. I don't know if their bullets will actually damage me when I am correctly colored. But I guess we will see. Yes, give me all the power. Oh, what just happened here? Wait, what just happened here? Um... I feel like my controller, maybe I took too much damage or something, but my ship just flew forward and like suicided. Even my controller glitched out for a second here. Okay, we can switch now. That was really weird, guys. I just flew into the middle of the screen and suicided. I swear I didn't do that intentionally. Die. So somebody much smarter than me probably knows like the optimal color to pick on any particular part of this game. But I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, make educated guesses about what I'm supposed to be doing here. Release your energy, then die. I wonder if when you're in dark energy mode, you do more damage to the light guys and vice versa. That'd be kind of cool. I guess maybe you're supposed to be collecting energy, so I should be switching back and I should kill the light guys with the light ship and the dark guys with the dark ship. This guy looks light powered. Oh, switch into the this guy. Whoa. 
I guess it's kind of interesting when a boss shoots both light and dark energy projectiles because you can like pick which one you want to avoid. Um, like if, if the dark ones, if the dark pattern looks too difficult, you can just pick the light pattern. Oh god, I didn't switch fast enough. Um, whoa. Like here you definitely want to avoid the light ones and just be dark because look at all this dark energy that's flying everywhere. You could never dodge all that darkness. If you- oh shoot, I pressed the wrong button. Oh no, we're dead! I meant to uh, press the button to uh, you use the built-up energy. Um, I've seen a video where they get somebody to play this and they don't tell them about the ship switching mechanic and it's just hilarious. Like they get to this boss and they're just like, how are you supposed to do this? This is crazy! And they think this is some sort of like game that only South Koreans can beat. Um, all right, then we switch. Switch? Okay, I think my controller definitely does feel like it's starting to lag or something. Oh my god, this is crazy. Go! Light energy. Light energy activate. Oh my god. I can't even look at the boss to see if I'm actually shooting or damaging it. I literally have to just stare at my ship and all the little bubbles and balls flying at me trying to kill me. Okay, I think we got him. I will say that is the one, my one criticism that sort of spans all these, like, shooter games. And I think it's the reason I never got into them too much myself, is that I feel like you just have to have a laser focus on your, your ship, stare at it, and just dodge bullets. And you're not able to sort of, like, take in the surroundings. And it's not to say that in other games you don't have to pay attention to your character, but like in Super Mario Brothers, it's not like there's Goombas, you know, flying at me from every direction possible to the point where I can't change my focus off of Mario for a second or I'll die. Um, meanwhile, the background is scrolling at incredible speeds behind me. Like that that's not how the, you play Mario. Um, going back to Mario is a, a classic example of a, a game that I know and love. Um... We've entered our high score twice, which I don't think is a good sign. Oh my god. Can I go through this? Oh, I can. There we go. Let's get these guys. All right, chapter two. What is this one? I always like when games uh, denote levels with chapters. Like they're, tr they're trying to present themselves as, as high literature. Like, this isn't a video game, this is a chapter, okay? You don't know what kind of character development, or scenes, or what we got going on. Okay, I tried to be fancy there and I killed myself. You don't know what kind of character development, or scenes, or, or complex story arcs are here. Yeah, it's a lot of bullets being shot, so what? But it's still a chapter, damn it. Chapter of a, a, a story as old as time. Oh wait, shoot, I meant to switch into dark mode for that. Oh wait, now I gotta switch into light mode. This is confusing my brain. My brain... Oops. <coughs> I didn't realize that wasn't background. I didn't realize this big orange door was like, actually something that could kill you. Okay, what is this now? What is this now? What? Did you just die there? Oh my god, this is actually like... Interestingly challenging. Let's go this way. Um, I totally lost my train of thought, by the way. Oh, God. Let me go up like this. Absorb all this stuff. Oh, God. Absorb. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. I, I don't think we're going to make it too far in this game. I just want to warn you guys. I just want to set your expectations. What was I supposed to do there? I can't be both at once. I feel like, um... Can we insert quarters? Is there a way to do that? No. Well, that's just cruel when you can't insert quarters to, like, still count down. I, again, I get that it's an arcade port, but whatever. Um... I mean, they should give you a way to gain quarters. You know? There was a Die Hard Trilogy, the arcade game that we played. I think we played on Dreamcast or something like that uh, for the Die Hard Christmas years ago now on the channel. But that one actually has 
uh, a submarine arcade game that you can play from the title screen just for fun. But if you get high scores there, you earn coins that you can then use in the Die Hard game. I thought that was actually a pretty cool mechanic. Um, I mean, maybe this one does. It, let's see. Does it have train and refine your battle techniques? Um, secrets? No. Yeah, it doesn't seem to have an obvious way that you can uh, earn uh, quarters. But anyway, let's just try this other game mode here and see what it's about. Um, yeah, I was totally. Ta I think I was talking about the fact that it, in Mario and stuff, uh, with shooters, you just you have to be laser focused on your. Uh, character or whatever and uh i just feel like it's it's a kind of gameplay that oh shit i'm trying to get too fancy and collect power from <coughs> both the light and the dark guys at once but what i'm doing is i'm changing too fast i'm getting killed by the light i'm getting killed by the very power cubes i'm trying to collect the irony it's like now i want these dark ones now i want the light ones I want the dark ones. Give me all that energy. Give me your energon cubes. Come on. Feed me. Feed me. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh! Okay. Well, whatever. This is all just a uh, test run, you know? You know, at least we're playing this at home. <laughs> if I was in the arcades and I was dropping quarters on this beast, dying like a mofo... Like I am, I would be sad. We'll meet again someday soon. I'd be very sad. I don't know about you guys. I didn't go to the arcades a lot as a kid. Um, I went, I went like once in a while, but like when I went, I had a very limited budget. Uh, usually it's like my parents or my grandparents gave me like a couple bucks or maybe just like a couple quarters. And I would literally walk through the arcades and like very carefully ponder and consider which game I was going to insert a quarter into. And if you did, and you know, it's, it, it's sort of like, um, going out to eat, you know, when I go out to eat for myself, um, let's just go into easy mode. Why not? Um, and we'll just do the trial game. Um, uh, when I go out to eat, I almost always get something that I know I like. Uh, but then the consequence of that is I don't, uh, try new things. And it's sort of a, a catch-22, because if I try, if I got a new dish, if I went to a restaurant and I bought a new dish that I'd never tried before and I didn't like it, that would be, like, essentially the most disappointing thing, I think, that could happen to me. Because <laughs> then I, I basically would have an unhappy meal. So, I, so I'm the, the kind of person who's sort of like, you know what? I would rather... <coughs> excuse me. I would rather... Um, just play it safe and eat the thing that I know I like as opposed to um, you know risking it and potentially eating something that I uh, don't like so when it comes to arcade games I feel like I had the same mentality where I was uh, always sort of like uh, I just want to like play the games that I know I'm going to like um, and not risk it so much and, and play games that I, I don't know if they're going to be good or not. So, like, games I played a lot were, like, the X-Men arcade game, Ninja Turtles the arcade game. I played uh, Super Off-Road. Because I found... The thing I always enjoyed about Super Off-Road was basically on, like, one quarter. You could play for a long time. Because every race was short. It was easy to win a race. You would uh, slowly accumulate and build up... Um, you know, like a better and better car. And then you might have to use a continue or two here and there. But it's like the amount of gameplay I would get out of one quarter on that game was a lot more than I got off uh, other random games. Um, I also like the uh, Terminator 2 arcade game where you had the gun and you had to, like, shoot Terminators in the future. Mainly because I love that film Terminator 2. It's a great, 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 great movie. One of the best. Truly, it's to this day still immensely watchable what the hell just happened there um immensely watchable even to this day. oh my controller even to this day oh don't kill me man no it didn't okay um oh, jesus i think anything with arnold schwarzenegger i'm on board with i just love that guy i'll be you know what? i'll be very sad when he dies because he's not gonna live forever he's getting old he's like 60 70 it's getting up there, man. I mean, we all are. I still, in my mind, it's like still the year 1999 in terms of like art and movies and culture and stuff. 
but it obviously is like 20 years beyond that so I still feel like I'm young, early 20s when I'm like you know 40s and it, it, it is what it is you just one day you wake up and you're just super old man nobody tells you this when you're young you're like everyone says one day you'll be old but nobody says no like literally one day you'll wake up and you'll just be super old and there'll just be nothing you can do about it and you'll just say whoa what happened man Last thing I remember, everybody was into the Super Nintendo. Now people mock me because I can't, uh, can't join them in the future. <coughs> Oops, switch to this mode. Oh god! Oh, I, that was a good switch, actually. Switch. Oh! Switch. Fire. Okay, I think I'm actually getting slightly better at this game, if you guys can believe that. It doesn't sound too fantastical to you. Ooh, nice try. That was not too bad, actually. Beat that guy pretty easily, if I do say so myself. I mean, we are playing on, like, the easiest game mode. But still. Indicate this battle result. A battle report indicates this battle result. That is bad English. I'm bad at reading, but that's also bad English. Oops, just blew my special power. Right off the bat. Oh, and exploded. Alright, we're not starting off this level well, but since we are playing on easy trial mode, we have unlimited continues, so we'll at least get to see the end of this level here. Um, so that's something. Something to look forward to. Jesus. The background scrolling so fast is kind of screwing me up. Oops. Okay. Oh, we can kill these things. I guess everything can be killed is the lesson in this game. Alright, off we go! It is kind of cool how it is like a 3D, 2D game. Like it's... <laughs> you could have made this game back in the- I always say this, you could have made this game back in the Super Nintendo era and that, like, literally there's nothing about the gameplay that couldn't have existed, like, you know, 20 years before it came out. But the sort of 3D transitions between levels are at least creative. I will grant you. Okay, so for this part... I'm gonna hang back here. And, like, I'm only gonna go when I feel like I need to go. Okay, we'll switch into this mode, Oop. and into this mode. Okay, now this is a door. <laughs> I learned that the hard way. Okay. You know what, it only took me like one... Uh, not playthrough, but one attempt at the game to start to figure it out. And I feel like already switching between light and dark ships is becoming more natural to me. So it's like a mechanic I'm slowly coming to grips with. And come on. There we go. Oh, speak of the devil. Speak of the devil. Oh, hello. Okay, and okay. Okay. Ooh, whoa. I need to itch my arm, but I literally had to pause the game because I, uh, I would totally die if we kept going. Okay, here we go. Oh, shit! Pressed the wrong button. I knew I was supposed to switch there. That was a mechanical error. Okay, I gotta switch here, too. I guess I should switch to the white ones for security. Dark. Oh no, I got scared of the ships and accidentally bonked into the wall. Okay. I gotta itch my nose again. Man, why am I so itchy? It's like, you know what it is? It's like a nervous thing. I'm like getting, uh, it's like, it feels so intense that I'm like, I'm not like actually getting nervous, but it's sort of like, I'm just getting itchy because feels like there's so much going on and I can't stop. My body's like, you should itch. You know what you should do right now is itch that face of yours. Aha! 
It is satisfying when the enemy is shooting a color that you know you're immune to and you're like, do your worst. I fear not you and your pathetic dark powered guns. For I myself am dark powered. Although this is a bad guy who seems to have both a dark and a light powered laser. Am I supposed to like do this? Interesting. Oh god. Oh god. Whoa. Whoa. Ah. I was trying to switch. <coughs> I'm just gonna suicide this one, I think. Or maybe I can't- Oh god, he's gonna eat me! Oh, let's continue. Kill him! Oh, wait, what got me there? Okay, there we go. I was gonna say, if I could just kill one of his eyeballs... That would just be very good. Then we can just focus on the other one. Um, he's still gonna fire an alternating set of light and dark things at me, isn't he? Well, suicided right into that eye. Okay. Jeez, it's like... You have to be so precise here. Oh! The fact that you can crash into that thing is actually a little annoying. Alright, there we go. We beat him! It was all skill, it had nothing to do with infinite continues. <laughs> oh, jeez. We beat him! We beat him! Boss destroyed bonus, you're rank C. I'm a, I'm a regular C student, guys. When it comes to this game. <clears throat> the trial game is clear. Congratulations, you've done well. Looks like you've gotten the hang of it. Try your hand at normal mode. You can always return to trial mode. Rome wasn't built in a day. Keep at it. Eventually, you'll be able to clear the game. Good luck. What a random, encouraging message. Well, this is one of the games of the book of Thousand One Video Games just play before you die. Ikaguru... Ikaruga... Something like that. I actually don't have the title right in front of me. Uh, and it's all in Japanese here, so... I think it's Ikaruga. Something like that. Anyway, one of the games in the book, Thousand One Video Games, is Play Before You Die. I think as far as shooters go, it, uh... It has that... It has an interesting mechanic. The, the switching back and forth between light and dark power. That is kind of an interesting, unique mechanic. I haven't seen it before. It does add an interesting element to the game. So I think I would say, like, if you do like these kinds of shooters, definitely is one you may want to check out if you've never heard of it, because it does have sort of a fresh, unique angle to it. Um, I think if you're not into shooters inherently, like, for me, they're not my favorite kind of game. And so as a result, there was the game itself wasn't like a shooter where I'm like whoa like even as a guy who doesn't like shooters this is really good it just sort of felt like okay this is like a shooter with an interesting mechanic so I don't think it's going to convert anyone who isn't already into shooters but it definitely is a really cool take on the shooter uh, mechanic with a unique or the shooter genre with a unique mechanic I haven't seen before so there you go did I get it right did I get it wrong let me know in the comments down below guys as always um, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, like the video, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Other than that, uh, I'll catch you in the next one with another uh, game from the book, A Thousand One Video Games. Just play before you die. So until next time, my friends, you'll take care of yourselves in peace.